Dark bleatings everyone! I'm still not used to filming without being able to see myself on my screen and I just already recorded this video and it was just the top of my head. <laughs> so let's try again. I'm giving you a double whammy book review today and I thought it might be fun to do these two together because, you know, opposites attract. So first I'm going to be talking about Rachel Harrison's So Thirsty, which is a sort of female-led supernatural horror story um, with a, you know, female main character, um, Sloane, who's in her 30s, and then it's very much about her sort of platonic friendship with Naomi, who's like a long-running best friend, and, you know, uh, things go awry and hijinks ensue. And then uh, I'm going to talk about Dan Howarth's Last Night of Freedom, which is a male-centric story about four guys who go on a stag party to a little village, um, only to find themselves at the centre of a sort of local tradition, if you will. So this is a, a real-world horror with no supernatural elements, uh, for this story anyway, and I can't wait to get more into that, um, and with all male characters, so I just thought that that would be uh, really fun to sort of like, not compare and contrast, but you know, talk about, um, yeah, kind of like two sides of a coin kind of discussion, if you know what I mean. Um, not that there's only two sides of a coin, but I'm just generalising. So, first up, um, Rachel Harrison's So Thirsty. Oh, these are going to be spoiler free, by the way. So, Naomi? No. Sloane is our protagonist and she's um, a woman whose birthday is coming up. It's, I think it's her 30th or it's her 30 something. Um, and her husband has kindly booked a little weekend getaway, but not for the two of them, for her and her friend Naomi, um, which seems nice at first, but maybe it isn't. And they go to stay in this, um, you know, nice little cabin or um, um, hut or something. Um, and then things go horribly awry because um, Sloane and Naomi are best friends, absolutely love each other to death, but they're quite opposites as far as sort of their personality types go. So Sloane is not miserable, but she's sort of just settled into contentment with her circumstances as they are, even though there are things that she's not very happy with in her life. She's very like unsatisfied and unfulfilled, unfulfilled, but she sort of just resigned herself to this being her life. Whereas Naomi is um, sort of free, impulsive, um, you know, takes risks but always lands on her feet, could throw together, you know, an outfit made out of, um, you know, tea towels and bin bags and look fabulous. She's one of those. And so um, their friendship is really layered and feels really authentic. And they've got some frustrations with each other, but also like you really feel the bond and the love between them. So it's it's like a really solid friendship. Um, Naomi accepts a party invitation on their behalf. Sloan really doesn't want to go because it's being hosted by some exotic, strange man. Um, but Naomi knows how to twist her arm into things and they get there. And then once they get there, Sloan really doesn't want to be at this party. Once it unfolds, what kind of party it's going to be. She also meets a sort of mysterious man who's saying very odd things. And then something goes horribly awry and uh, one or both of them have to continue life in a different way, shall we say. I'm not going to give any spoilers for this because it's just a really fun book. Obviously, um, from the title and the cover, you can tell this is vampires. And what I would more closely compare it to, if I had to try and compare it to anything, is I would say that this is this felt very much like Thelma and Louise. If Thelma and Louise appeared in the film Near Dark, have, have you seen that genius vampire film from 1987 that was totally overshadowed by the Lost Boys? But that's where it feels like to me. Now, I'm not saying that the vampire characters are as savage as Bill Paxton in <laughs> Near Dark, but they do definitely have that sort of traveling, roaming um, group kind of feel. And although I will say the characters are super likeable, but there is definitely an edge to them where you know that they'll do what they got to do. So you don't really want to F up in front of them in any sort of significant way. Um, I think that the things that Harrison did really well here is, first of all, I think she's top of the game for character work. I used to think it was Stephen King. Tim Levin is right up there for me as well with sort of how realistically painted characters that just really feel and act at 
all times like actual human beings and not for plot conveniences but I, I think that Rachel Harrison might actually be the best at this of all the authors that I read. I think that maybe she's the best because she manages to paint characters really quickly. Like I'm, I'm talking in a few lines, you can see and hear them. You get a sense of who they are, how they've always been. You, you get a sense of like how you'd feel about them if you were there in the moment and that's another thing that she's really good at when she's layering her protagonist so like Sloane is by no means a perfect person there are things to be frustrated about but she is extremely relatable and very understandable in her decision making and you know she's kind of she operates kind of from a place of fear rather than you know she's a deliberate capable decision maker not a you know jump off the deep end and see what happens kind of person and but you understand why and yeah you yeah within a few lines you can like really see both of these people and you feel like you're sat in the room with them it's i yeah harrison is really really talented for that the other thing that she has done amazingly well in this book that just made it so enjoyable it, it's the world building so we've got our vampires and we've got our vampire law and sort of the world as Rachel has created it so we're in the real world that you and I all, we all live in but there are vampires in it and there are rules for these vampires but we don't we're not told all of them we're kind of told only what we need to know for the sake of Naomi's journey and uh, Sloane's sorry I keep saying Naomi I mean Sloane and Naomi um yeah from Sloane's perspective especially so we're we're only really told what we need to know as far as Sloane is concerned so there are lots of things that are unanswered but not in a it's unsatisfying when the book ends kind of way this is very much a self-contained like fully fleshed out story there doesn't need to be any elaboration on it this is yeah this is like fully formed and contained but I feel like Rachel Harrison could follow in Anne Rice's footsteps and do an entire Vampire Chronicles series out of this world and some of these characters. Like, not even the characters in this book. She could just take the lore and run with it. There's so much that we're not told and so much that she could expand on. And that's, that's what made me really fall in love with this because I just, even though, you know, there's violence and blood in this world, it's pretty gnarly sometimes but I wanted to be in it and I very really feel that with a horror <laughs> a horror story I never want to be in the world but it just felt it feels so fresh to me and I love vampire fiction but I have found that it tends to either be um brooding tortured um you know the Cullens um uh, the vampire diaries you know the Salvators or whatever they're called um you know we they, and they're all falling in love with teenage girls for some reason even though they're all over 100 years old and um I yeah I, I kind of I'm not knocking that I actually enjoy that kind of fiction but they, they, we're either on that side of the fence with vampires these days or we're in 30 days of night territory where they're all com like soulless killing machines that are just ripping and tearing their way through people <laughs> and I, I prefer those kinds of vampires but I have been thinking well where's where's the middle ground true blood the tv show um i have read most of the sookie stack house books like they weren't really my cup of tea to be honest but i thought that the show actually struck that balance really well fully fleshed out character vampires uh you know all different types i know that they took inspiration from all different types of places but that's the closest i think i've come to like a middle ground on vampire fiction but this one was just just fresh and awesome and uh, a really great winter read I, I love reading vampire stories in the winter when the days are darker and everything it's just the perfect time so I hate giving star ratings I think they're really arbitrary but if I'm pushed for the sake of this video and this review I would wholeheartedly give this you know seven eight nine ten stars out of five it's yeah it's really good and I'm really confident recommending it to you okay and now on to our man's story so Last Night of Freedom by Dan Howarth is about four guys whose names I can't remember all of them but we've got our stag our best man um Ethan I do remember for some reason who's kind of like he's sort of like the tear away one of the group like th these guys are all in their 30s as well I think and Ethan's kind of the one who's sort of financially successful um but he you know hasn't sort of settled down doesn't have a partner doesn't have sort of a sig significant loves in his life or anything like that and then we have another character who's like the most grown up he's the most adulty adult in the group if that makes sense he's the one settled married couple of kids he 
he's a police officer so yeah i think that the thing that dan did really well that rachel you know that rachel also does is he set the characters really really fast for us like we're introduced to four people i usually get a bit confused with multiple characters i i lose track of who they are in lesser books not in this one because dan gave us these sort of identifying um markers for each of them that you know kept reminding you who they were until it just sort of sinks in pretty fast and the thing that i really really loved about the storytelling um style of this book is that it's all in first person and we're jumping from perspective so we will we move around our group of four so we're in we're seeing the world through their eyes um sort of in a revolving door kind of fashion and, and also there are um other characters so there's a stag party another stag party and we're in their heads as well so let me explain so our main stag party that's what we're going to call our protagonist the main stag party go to a little village for the stag they just book a and b and they're just gonna drink beer and play pool and that's what they're gonna do there are reasons for that um they don't realize that they've made a terrible mistake with this decision because they're just looking for a calm weekend away not like a wild you know strippers and chicken wings kind of stag party um there are some locals who are also on their stag party and unfortunately for our main stag party our protagonists th there's a tradition in this town when there's a stag when there's a wedding coming up and basically our group end up hunted spreading out through the countryside in this village hiding split up trying to survive this band of local marauding lunatics <laughs> who are hunting them so we're all in we're in real world territory here it doesn't stray off into the supernatural at any point unlike rachel's book which i i just thought that would be a nice contrast to talk about um so yeah th this isn't a spoiler this is stuff that's on the back so the first thing that i noticed was the way that dan set this up because i didn't read the back i didn't want to know anything about the book i never do um so our guys are playing pool in this local pub they kind of get the attention of the locals because they're not locals so it's kind of like that um you know when uh in american we're off in london when the guys walk into the slaughtered lap oh i think i'm actually wearing my slaughtered lamb t-shirt yeah, when the guys walk into the slaughtered lamb and everyone turns and stares at them, it's kind of that kind of feel. I was kind of getting like a like a hot fuzz vibe from, but not like comedy. It was just like the village feel, like that kind of thing. Um, they're playing pool and then they end up competing with the other stag group. And it becomes clear that Ethan is hustling them. Um, and I thought, oh, there's going to be trouble from that point onwards. But as it turns out... Ethan isn't the one doing the hustling and I just thought that the way that Dan like set this up and put the building blocks in and get kicked everything off it was just it was really subtle and it was really well done and yeah just really really enjoyable and then from there our group was sort of you know running around being hunted by people who've done this before there are reasons it's a local tradition for a reason there's you know uh it becomes evident that they've got away with this forever apparently so we know that the stakes are really really high and that you know this is a horror story so they're not all going to make it so you're constantly worrying every time you jump into somebody else's head you're wondering uh oh, who's gonna go it was just really really fun um this like rachel's book is a self-contained story everything about the world building is marvelous and the it's all done in a way that just serves the characters we're following so we're told what we need to know for the sake of the characters whose journeys that we're on however they could be more and i'm not saying that the book the book finishes it's like it's a it's a again fully rounded off story there's you know it doesn't need any expansion um but i would love to see a prequel I would love, love, love to see a prequel. This was so much fun. There's something hinted at here, and I actually really like the way that Dan did this because I think other authors would have, it would have been the focal point of the book. There are reasons that the locals are doing what they're doing, and it's sort of touched on, sort of glazed over, kind of hinted at. It is clearly a very, very important tradition to them, and you, you get an sort of an idea why you get enough of an idea where it satisfies the purpose of the story but oh my god i am dying dying for a prequel 
to, to delve into that. Like, I would love a counterpart to this book that goes a different direction that shows us more of this other side i can't tell you more than that without spoiling it like i don't even want to say like the words that are coming to mind right now but it yeah once again beautifully told wrapped up with a nice neat bow but i i could easily sit down and read several books set in this village or in this world in general so yeah really enjoyable um and yeah initially i had i had a gripe about this but as I've sat on it and thought about it for a couple of weeks, um, I've changed my mind. I actually think that, I think that the way Dan did everything is perfect. And again, this would be a 10 out of 5 read for me. I, I really, really loved it. So there we have it. We've got two different but similar, you know, male story of friendship, female story of friendship, um, dire circumstances that might or might not involve death dire circumstances that might or might not involve death um supernatural real world um excellent reads and i'm wholeheartedly confident that you guys would like love both of these um the you don't i don't think that any of them are like more suited for a readership of any particular gender or anything like that i think everyone can enjoy these uh because they are just you know human stories of relationships and struggles at the end of the day but they're both thoroughly entertaining for different and similar reasons so those are my recommendations if you've read these i'd love to talk to you in the comments if you put any spoilers could you just like say that in, in your comment just for courtesy for other people commenting that might not have read them but i'd really really love to talk to you guys if you read one or either of these or if you have any comments or questions that i can answer for you um i'd love to do so but yeah i'm really dying to talk about these books more because the more time that passes since reading them the more i want to talk about them so yeah hope i've given you something else to look forward to reading and um do you guys hear that what the heck subscribe if you don't subscribe kaylee <coughs> dead oh, must have been the wind please